The table of showbread exemplifies uh, what God wants to nourish us with, but also how we can bless God. Now, bear with me. If sin of, uh, uh, of choosing to do what is harmful to us and separates us from God, if that sin originates from the soul place, then perhaps we can get some clues from the instrument called the table of showbread. You, you need to listen very carefully to this, okay? When our minds are filled with our own thoughts, or even the enemy tries to tempt you, it is our choice and act of the will to either accept it, reject it, whatever we do with it, it is the act of the will. Can I get an amen? amen. All of you have a will that God has given you. And in that place, the holy place, we have the table of showbread. And do you know how they made bread back in the day? It's not very difficult different to how we make bread, right? They, they have uh, the, the flour, uh, and they put some olive oil and water, and they mix it all up, but the flour has to be ground up. See, what God wants from us today is that our wills be totally grinded up, mixed with the living water of God, put in the holy fire oven, and given to him as a sacrifice. When our will is totally yielded to the will of God, guess what happens? We want to do what is pure, righteous, and holy because our will has already been yielded to God. I'm encouraging myself in the Lord because I know what it is and I know it's getting to you. Sometimes the frequency is kind of slow and it'll hit you maybe next week or tomorrow, but I know it's going to hit you. Just bear with me, bear with me. How we make bread... And we offer it unto God as a sacrifice is how we can yield our souls, yield our will to the will of God. I've experienced this in my own life because I come from a family of alcoholics. Did anyone know that? That's why I don't drink alcohol. If anyone asks me, Pastor, why are you being so whatever, you know, don't drink alcohol? Because I, I come from that background and I know people within this congregation who have come out of that lifestyle and I want to love them. And for me, because of that bad heritage, which the curse has been broken in Jesus' name, amen? amen. But there are sometimes residues of that that pop up and I didn't even know it. So it's easy for me to have kind of a, an addictive mentality. Like, for instance, somehow I get interested in polar bears. Anyone like polar bears? So I research polar bears. Nothing wrong with polar bears, beautiful animals that God has created. Nothing. It's not sinful. But if I'm not too careful, if my will has not been grinded up and with the spring water of the Spirit and put in the fire oven of the Holy Spirit then that can go into a place where I know more about polar bears than the Word of God. Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm not talking about vices, you know, like bad stuff. Of course we don't do those things. But sometimes it's the sin of omission rather than the sin of commission. Sometimes we don't do the things that we need to do. Nadab and Abihu knew exactly what they needed to do. Use the holy fire from the brazen altar and bring it into the golden altar of incense and give it unto the Lord as a fragrant sacrifice. They knew full well something had contaminated them in their soul. Something had already happened. They had let something in. Martin Luther would say, you can let a bird fly over your head, right? But don't let it nest. Some temptation might come your way. And some people think, oh, temptation, oh God, I, I've sinned against you. You have not sinned. You've been tempted. And you have the willpower when you are yielded to God fully to say no in Jesus' name. Some people beat themselves up like a pulp. 
Oh, I, I'm so wretched, pastor. I thought of this, I thought of this, I thought of this. And then I say, did you reject it? They say, yes. Then you haven't sinned. You've done what is righteous, pure, and holy to reject the deceit of the enemy and receive the truth of God's love. Right? So don't call temptation sin because you can't let it nest in your mind. Because once you begin to let it nest, guess what? It begins to be premeditated and you begin to meditate on it. You saturate yourself in the bad things and then before you know it, you're doing it. Right? But like I said, remember the table of showbread. Our sacrifice to God is that our wills are totally grinded up to a pure powder. Can I get an amen? My will, ground up. Add the spring of living water. Put it in the fire of God's grace and his holiness. And give it up as a living sacrifice. It's my living sacrifice I give unto you, my Lord. My offering that I give to you. God does not need anything. He wants you. He wants me. He wants me to be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto him. And when I give my life over to him, guess what happens? He is pleased and he gives me joy, peace, revelation, unction, utterances from above. He gives me new ideas. He gives me vision for the future. In the midst of difficulty, I see opportunity in Jesus' name. Not me, but God. But God, when I will is totally yielded to the will of God. 